They spend their days and nights soaking up the poetry of the streets. And now a group of New York cab drivers are putting their experiences down in verse. Three longtime drivers were chosen to write and perform their work at the Penn World Voices Festival. John McDonough is one of these drivers and poets. We reach Mr. McDonough in New York City. John, how was the weekend when you had your debut as a New York City poet? Well, it, it, it was more of a week than a weekend. Uh, after we were taking these classes on how to write poetry, because I, I've really never even read poetry, uh, on Monday night was the opening of Penn Festival, and the head of it came up to me during the week. I was picking up flyers to hand out of my local bar and stuff like that. Not that that would have brought anybody in, but he said, do you want to finish up opening night? And I said, you're short staff, you want me to clean up and serve drinks or what? No, he says, we want you to do that poem. And I said, oh, all right, I'll give it a shot. It was at the Great Hall at Cooper Union. And I get there, and there's Solomon Rushdie. He's opening up the event. What? And <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's all the greatest writers in the world are there. And they're being introduced one after the other, and this one's been translated into 13 languages. This one's been translated into 20 languages. And I'm sitting there, and I'm going, oh, please, just translate mine into English. That's all I'm asking <laughs> for. So after they all finish, I get up, I do it. People seem to like it. And then on Saturday night, was the, or Saturday afternoon, was at Joe's Pub in, uh, down in the East Village. And how did you do? How did it go? Well, you know what? It's very difficult unless people are lying to you. You know, they all seem to enjoy it and come up and said, uh, you know, they enjoy your observations of the city. But like I said, it took 35 years to write this one minute and 55 second poem. I don't recommend it to anyone <laughs> to drive a yellow cab 12 hour shifts to come up with these observations, do research. It's a lot easier. Uh, you know, but of course, what better place to find uh, find poetry than in a, a yellow cab? So what what kinds of things have you seen that you thought would be great experiences for poetry? Well, I, I just describe particularly, uh, as I said, as a cab driver, you see the city changing, you feel the city changing, and you taste the city changing. And what I mean about feeling, people would get in and say, I'm going down to Avenue A, which we used to call the Alphabet Jungle. You knew they were going down there to cop dope. So you would go down there, it was a shooting gallery. The guy would say, listen, can you wait here? I'm going to be five minutes, and I'll be right back. So, like, you're really frightened. The guy would run up, cop dope, jump in, and then you take him to the Upper East Side. That has changed. And taste-wise, years ago, uh, th there was nowhere to eat. Then the Korean delis came in, and they were 24 hours, so there was some way to go to get something to drink. And now the way Manhattan is, you can get whatever you want 24-7, including medicine. You just see everything that's going on and feel everything that's going on in the city. And what about the, I mean, individual experiences? Is there any, the, the craziness that you must encounter in those 12-hour shifts? Did you, can you capture that, or is it just, is just kind of like no one would believe this if I told them about it? Well, I, I mean, just getting involved with drug deals. You know, people, you know, listen, I'm going in to do this illegal act. Can you wait and take me, you know, back home when I cop the drugs? You know, one time I was robbed. The guy wouldn't pay me through the back of the cab. He wanted to get outside, and then he pulled out a 9 millimeter, put it up to the window, and I just put ducked my head down and hit the gas and just went flying off. Did you ever think, though, that, that, it, that there was poetry in this? There was some, because, I mean, it's been, the, the Yellow Cab story has been turned into everything, movies, uh, television programs. Did you see some poetry in your work? No, no. I, 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 I was very good at telling stories when you go out for a drink at the local bar and stuff like that. It's very different when someone says, listen, we need you to put it down on paper and get up on stage and do it. That, that's a whole completely different genre than hanging out and having a pint of Guinness. So, you know, so I went to the classes, you know, they said do this and tighten it up here and take out this word and stuff like that. And they seemed to like it. And, you know, we went with it for this week. You know, where it's going to go after this? Like, it's, to me, it's over. I, as I told them that night, I opened and closed tonight with my poetry. It's <laughs> over. <laughs> All right. I know everyone wants to hear your poem. So do you want to, you want to read it to us now? Yeah, this is just uh, the 35 years of driving in New York, and I titled it, What Happened to My City? Familiar neighborhoods are strangers again. The alphabet jungle has become the Lower East Side. 
Crime Square has turned back into Times Square. Bushwick has ceased to exist, replaced by East Williamsburg. People asked to go to Sobro, no longer running from the South Bronx. What happened to my city? The Twin Towers used to be two. Now it's only one. New Yorkers used to yell at each other. Now we tweet. Pissing in the street has been replaced by picking up after your dog. Squeegee men and graffiti artists are now found in museums. And yuppies have turned into hipsters. What happened to my city? The ashtrays in the back of the cab have been replaced by TVs. Passengers high on weed and beer are now high on ecstasy and bottled water. No longer do you have change, but do you take credit? Taxis are getting smaller, but New York asses are getting bigger. What happened to my city? Junkies used to do the dope dance. One step forward, two steps backwards. Now they balance on yoga mats and do Tai Chi. Watch out for the red light cameras. Don't go in the bus lane. Stay out of the bike lane. What happened to my city? John, that is great. 35 years to do it. Uh, I don't think there'll be another one coming out very shortly anyway. So, well, These are great observations made into poetry. I have to say that you, no matter how good you get at poetry, you're still going to make more money driving a cab. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I just finished 12 hours today. I, you know, I'm not going to stop and start doing poetry for senior citizens in libraries around the city. I mean, come <laughs> on, that, that's just not going to happen. John, it's great to talk to you. Thanks. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. John McDonough, taxi driver, New York City, and that's where we reached him.